So let's look at 97i. This is one that involves trig, um, trigonometric substitution or trig sub for short, short here. Um, and you've got to know how to identify which trig substitution is needed. This one's a little bit tricky because usually it's like x squared plus or minus something, right? And then, then a, under a radical or to some, you know, some power involving one half. But um, it's a little different here. So there's a couple ways of going around this. I, I think you could hopefully recognize that this is the quantity 2x squared. So you could let 2x equal the trig substitution, which in this case will involve a secant, okay, secant theta. Um, and, and the value of a here is going to clearly be 1, right? a is equal to uh, a, a squared is 1, so a is 1. Um, in this problem, but I can do a, a little substitution to sort of clean it up here. If I let u be 2x, du is 2dx, 1 half du is dx. And so my dx is 1 half du. And then the 4x squared is the quantity u, 2x quantity squared, so u squared minus 1. So it just cleans it up a little bit. And now the trig substitution is just u is a is 1 secant theta. So when you have u squared minus 1, it's going to be secant theta. Now, you know, how do you know? Is it, is it sine theta? Is it tangent theta? Well, tangent theta, hopefully, you know, is the one that is always going to be plus, right? Like u squared plus one would be a tangent theta. If it was one minus u squared, that would be a sine of theta. And if you forget, you know, the way is just to, just to check. I mean, I don't memorize. There's three forms. Uh, what I do is I go ahead, always remember your du, right? Don't forget that. If u is secant theta, du is the derivative of secant theta, secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. Okay. And then what is the square root of u squared minus one? Well, if u is secant theta, it's going to be the square root of secant squared theta minus one. What is secant squared theta minus one? Well, that is tangent squared theta. That's the Pythagorean identity. Remember, the Pythagorean identity says that tangent squared theta plus one is secant squared theta. And, and you're going to have that on the test, right? It's the, one of the Pythagorean identities. It's on the trigonometric, uh, trig, trigon, trigonometry help sheet. Um, and so you can see then if I subtract one from both sides, that tangent squared theta is secant squared theta minus one. But what's the square root of tangent squared? It's just tangent theta. And that works, right? If You can't force it. If it was one minus secant squared theta, one minus secant squared theta is negative tangent squared theta, which you, you can't, it won't work, right? You can't take the square root of a negative quantity. So, you know, don't force it, right? You, you know, make sure it works, okay? Now, I can replace everything. So I've got the one half, or if I that, pull that out, the integral of u, the square root of u squared minus one, what is that? U squared of u squared minus one is just tangent theta, okay? And then what's my du? Well, your du is secant theta, tangent theta, d theta, there's your du. So this part right here is the du, and this, of course, was the square root of u squared minus 1. Okay. So I got tangent times tangent is tangent squared theta, secant theta, d theta. Now, that integral right there is not easy to do. If there was an even power of secant, I can peel off the secant squared right, to, to do a substitution where I let u be tangent theta, but I don't have an even number of secants. If I had an odd tangent, I can pull off a tangent secant tangent factor and let uh, u be secant theta. And I have my du of secant theta, tangent theta. But either one of those aren't there, so that's bad. So the best way to do it in this case is to convert, if you can, if you have even tangent, convert everything over to secants. And you can do that if you got even tangents, because remember, uh, tangent squared theta is secant squared theta minus 1. And so I'm just going to replace tangent squared theta with secant squared theta minus 1. And notice I've multiplied by secant theta by distributing secant times secant squared secant cubed, secant theta times one minus secant theta, right? So that's what this becomes. Now let me split this integral up. So don't forget this one half we have out here. So this is the integral of secant cubed theta, d theta, minus the integral of secant theta, okay? And so um, what we um, want to be able to do now is to realize that, you know, some of you know this one, uh, but um, you know, I derived this one in the lecture video, um, involves a logarithm. Uh, but this one, this one's tough. So what we're, we're going to do is use number 12 on the book's uh, table of trig integrals. So there's a, there's a table of trig integrals that's in the book, okay? Um, it's at the end of section 7.2.
And then there's a more extensive table of integrals we'll look at later, but but right now we're just using this short, uh, there's like 19, 18, 19 different integral forms there. And one of them, number 12, is, is secant to the m theta. It's a, it's a power reducing formula, really. And then, of course, m in our case is three, right? We have cubed. So with m is three, with number 12, you can plug it in. You might want to pull that up right now. I don't have it right here, but pull that up and look and make sure you see that this is what you get in here. One half tangent theta secant theta plus one half integral of secant theta. Um, I don't think I have a copy of that handy right now with me. I probably should have doing this, but um, it is there. So make sure when you replace m with three in that uh, formula, you get this right here. Okay, if you're having any trouble with that, let me know. So that, that's what you get there. Don't forget the minus secant theta. Now, the reason I didn't do this minus secant theta yet is, of course, this is already evaluated, but this is an integral, this is an integral. But look at this, one half of secant theta d theta minus one secant theta d theta. Well, one half minus one, you can treat these like, like terms in a way. One half minus one is minus one half secant theta. Okay, and so now the secant theta is actually number 11, right? The antiderivative of, of secant theta is the natural log of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta. Okay, so I've got the, the one half out here, recopy that. All of this is minus one half the integral of secant theta d theta, so minus one half, and there's the integral of it to the antiderivative is natural log absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta. And then we throw in now that we've got all, got all the antiderivative figured out plus the C, okay? We gotta go back to the original variable. So how do we do that? I can draw a right triangle, but in this case, we only got tangents and secants. And we know already what secant is, what's secant theta? It's equal to U. It's equal to u. What's tangent theta equal to? Well, right here, tangent theta is equal to the square root of u squared minus one. Now, if you're used to drawing the rectangle every time, you can do that, that's fine. You're gonna get the same thing I just come up with, obviously. So, uh, you know, if, if u is secant theta, secant theta is u over one, secant uh, theta being u over one, secant theta is hypotenuse over adjacent. Again, that's on the trig help sheet. Make sure you know how to, to do this. Secant is um, hypotenuse over the adjacent. So the hypotenuse is u, the adjacent is one. And in order for this to satisfy Pythagorean theorem, one squared plus this squared is u squared, then whatever this thing squared is has to be u squared minus one. So this thing is the square root of u squared minus one. And tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent. This divided by this is exactly that. So, I mean, in this case, you don't have to do it, but if I needed to know what cosine or sine was or something like that, yeah, you'd have to draw the triangle to get it. So I know what u is, uh, or I know what secant theta is, it's u. Tangent theta is the square root of u squared minus one. So I'm just gonna replace tangent theta with the square root of u squared minus one, secant theta with u. Secant theta with u tangent theta with the square root of u squared minus one. Then recall, remember my original substitution, I did u was equal to two x. Again, you don't have to do that substitution. I just like it because it cleans it up. You could have done and started out from the very beginning saying two x is equal to secant theta. And then you have x is one half secant theta. And guess what? There's your one half that floats, that floats into here, okay? Um, but with mine, I plug it back in. So two x, times one fourth is one half x, two x squared quantity is two x times two x is four x squared minus one, one fourth natural log u is two x, and then u squared is four x squared plus one, and then plus there's there's the answer that I have in, in the answer to this one. So a lot going on with these problems, especially the, uh, you know, as we build up into these techniques. And so you do have to be careful, keep track of things, uh, show all your work, clearly state what you're doing. If you, you know, when, I, when I'm reading this, if you do the things that I've done, it's going to be real easy to see, you know, here's my trig substitution, here's my DU. You know, even drawing the, the triangle when you definitely need it is, is important here. We didn't need it, but, you know, drawing that, right? And then, you know, showing each step. If you use a particular 
uh, integral form, right? If there's one that you need, then you know you should you should state which one you're using. Okay. All right. So I hope this uh, clarifies things for number ninety-seven. I.